Tesla is everywhere. All over the news, social media, your mates love them, your nan knows about them. I just bought one. You can't move for Teslas. But how did that happen? How on earth did it go from nothing to the most valuable car company in the world in fewer than 20 years? This is the story of how Tesla became huge. The story starts with two friends, Martin Eberhard and Mark Tappening, who, after a chance meeting at work, became close mates and went into business together. Their first business wasn't anything to do with cars, though. It was the Rocket eBook Reader, one of the first of its kind, kind of like the Kindle's great great granddad. For their next big project, the two wanted to create a greener way to travel because at the time there wasn't really much choice in that area. So they got to work, eventually forming Tesla Motors Incorporated on July 1st, 2003. The project caught the eye of a man called Elon Musk, who'd made a big stack of money selling a project he worked on, PayPal, to eBay. He invested $6.5 million in an investment run in 2004, becoming Tesla's largest shareholder and chairman of the board. Eberhard, Tappening, Musk and Ian Wright, the company's third employee, as well as J.B. Straubel, who joined in 2004 as chief technical officer, are officially the co-founders of the company. For their first effort, Tesla worked on an electric sports car, the Roadster, unveiling it in 2006. It had a carbon fiber composite body, a 248 horsepower, 270 newton meter electric motor, and a 53 kilowatt hour battery, giving it a range of over 200 miles. It was built in part with Lotus, hence the similarity, and it was a bit of part sharing, but it did have its own unique technology. In 2007, Eberhard was voted off the company's board, which didn't go down brilliantly. He was given a new job, but eventually left in 2008 and filed a lawsuit against Musk in 2009, which was eventually dropped. Tappening carried on working for the company until leaving voluntarily the same year. 2008 saw the Roadster launch officially, and while production wasn't in the hundreds of thousands, the price tag was over 100 grand in fact, it left a mark. As well as finding celebrity owners like George Clooney and Matt Damon, it broke records and won awards and proved that an EV could be desirable. But that was only the start. It was also in 2008 that Musk took over as CEO and made some hefty staffing cuts to save money. Sound familiar? 2008 saw the Model S announced, a huge leap forward for the company and EVs in general, but there was a problem. The Tesla of 2008 wasn't quite as flush with cash as the Tesla of today. In fact, in 2009, there was less than $10 million in the bank. Big cash for a person, but not really much when you're a car company trying to stay afloat. And that's despite proving that EVs could work. Thankfully, Daimler dropped $50 million into its account in exchange for a share of the company, and the US Department of Energy gave it a loan of about $465 million. Now, while Tesla was busy selling cars, it was also selling something else, zero emission vehicle credits. In a nutshell, companies that sell petrol and diesel cars get fined if their average fleet emissions is above a certain limit. Companies that sell electric cars don't have any emissions and therefore aren't fined. Instead, they're given credits. The petrol car companies can then avoid or reduce their fines if they buy credits from the EV makers. And it was big business. By 2019, Tesla reportedly earned $357 million from the sale of carbon credits to other car companies. That number rose to $1.78 billion in 2022. It's worth saying that Tesla, by selling credits to companies that might otherwise have been fined into oblivion, might have actually saved a great number of car brands from extinction, not least Alfa Romeo, as we reported on in 2021. now to 2009 when the company unveiled the Model S prototype. The car was some way off being released to the public, but it kickstarted something of a phenomenon that the company's relied on for most of its life. Hype. While the Roadster was still being sold in limited numbers and enjoying a bit of controversy as a result of a certain British TV car show that I used to carry on my back, the promise of a modern, good-looking EV that could do 300 miles on a charge and cost next to nothing to run was pretty appealing. 
and people wanted it. Remember, at this point, the Nissan Leaf wasn't even a thing, nor was the Renault Zoe or anything else really. The best you could get was a G-Wiz. Tesla was doing something that nobody else was, and they were doing it well. The following year, Tesla did something big. It went public on the stock exchange. May 21st, 2010, saw 13.3 million shares issued at $17 a go, raising $226 million. It was a good thing, but it was also potentially a bad thing because while having lots of people putting money in is a plus, stocks can also drop. How? Well, through bad news, mostly, vehicle fires, reliability issues, news that production isn't quite where it should be, investigations from the US Department of Justice, upsetting the SEC, stories of workplace injuries, negative press, basically anything bad can affect the share price. Oh, and when the boss's tweeting starts to get a little out of hand, that can also affect the share price quite a bit as well. By the end of 2010, according to market cap, Tesla was worth $2.52 billion, a fair amount considering the Model S was still a couple of years away. At the time, Toyota was worth $123.89 billion, but Tesla's ability to drive up hype, find fans and promise something genuinely new in the market and the fact it had a Tony Stark-esque boss was really, really starting to help it make waves. When 2012 rolled around, the Roadster went out of production and the Model S came to market. It made a huge impact. The car won accolades all over the place. The world's press loved it, customers loved it. And it was the darling of the EV scene, the admittedly small EV scene, but still. The Masterstroke here wasn't just developing a car, but a network of chargers to go with it. Tesla's supercharger network started small with just six points in California, but today there are over 40,000 all over the planet. Initially, and still for some cars, using them was completely free. Sure, a charge wasn't and still isn't as quick as filling a tank with fuel, but when you're in a well-lit, well-designed, reliable, and reasonably speedy supercharger location with the option to watch YouTube or play games on your car's big screen, Tesla fans didn't care. By then, the company was worth $3.86 billion, but things were only gonna go up. As the Model S found fans all over the world, Tesla started making noises not just about cars, but also about the tech in them. In 2013, Autopilot was introduced, allowing customers' cars to drive pretty much without a human, to automatically park and be summoned. As the years went on, Autopilot's breadth of ability grew, adding features like automatic lane changes and more besides. When the system was first introduced, Tesla was worth $27.95 billion, a huge boost over just a couple of years previously, but still a way off Toyota's $198.99 billion. In late 2015, the Model X hit the road, building on the success of the S. Its birth wasn't straightforward. It was beset by delays caused by its complex doors and motor cooling and needing to hit Model S production targets and more. And then initial quality control issues, but it was still a hype machine. In less than a year, sales crossed 10,000. Not bad for a company that was essentially a startup. With two high profile and highly desirable models on the road, Tesla moved on to smaller, more attainable fare, the Model 3. Smaller, cheaper, but still full of tech, as is the Tesla Way. The Model Y SUV that followed offered the same, and they sold in huge numbers. By June 2021, the Model 3 surpassed 1 million global sales, and there were 759,000 Model Ys sold in 2022, putting it in the top five best-selling cars behind the Toyota Corolla, the RAV4, and Ford F-Series trucks. Having just bought a Model Y myself, I have no doubt that this thing will probably go on to become the world's best-selling car. One of the main reasons for this success is the fan base. Those in the Tesla camp love the products and the life that comes with it. And some, a noisy some, will hear absolutely nothing negative said against it. Try it. Just read the comments. I don't think there's another group of stands who are more dedicatedly stanish to a car or more protective of a brand CEO than Tesla stands are to their space daddy. However, Musk's word can be unpredictable and the company doesn't always deliver when it says it will. The Cybertruck was unveiled in 2019 with production promised to begin in 2021. A new take on the Roadster that Musk has said will come with jet thrusters was unveiled in 2017 with a 2021 production date. And that has also failed to materialize. 
But the promise of these things kept fans going, some of whom notably have laid down deposits. Even Tesla products that have made it to market haven't had a smooth ride. Musk has said that autonomous driving is a matter of years away more than once, and it still hasn't quite happened yet. And with its optional full self-driving beta, the firm has something that does some of the work for the driver, although they must still be in control of the vehicle to take over if things don't go as planned. And sometimes things don't go as planned. It's been reported to cause sudden movements in the wrong direction, has been linked to multiple fatalities, and has been shown to not stop for child-sized mannequins in testing. Tesla's faithful love it though. One fan, Stan, has gone so far as to borrow a child to prove the system wouldn't hit it, all to protect the honor of their car. Thankfully, there were no children hurt in that particular test. It was also noted that while FSD is in beta, not only are the people using it paying to test software for a multi-billion dollar company, anyone else on the road or pavement near them are also taking part in that test without having given permission, which feels morally questionable. In February 2023, the North American National Highway Traffic Safety Administration required Tesla to update over 360,000 vehicles equipped with FSD, as it could cause them to act in an unlawful or unpredictable manner. Tesla's stock up to 2019 was doing well. The business was making in-demand products and was the darling of middle-class dinner parties everywhere. At the close of the year, it was worth $75.71 billion, about three-eighths of Toyota. Then, in 2020, something happened. Its stock skyrocketed to $668.9 billion, over three Toyotas. Why and how? Well, the Model Y launch was a decent factor and emissions credit sales brought in over a billion dollars of pretty much pure profit, but it also capitalized on a new Shanghai production facility that opened at the end of 2019, which promised to pump out 200,000 cars a year. It also boosted revenues from China massively. It upped pricing for FSD, announced battery tech changes, and was still Tesla, which meant it was desirable. But 600 billion is nothing, because in 2021, thanks to a huge surge in vehicle deliveries, it topped $1 trillion. From startup with a $7.5 million investment to a trillion dollars in less than 20 years, the hype is real. But then things started going less well. In October 2022, Elon Musk bought Twitter for $44 billion and investor confidence in the company weakened and the company stock closed 2022 at a $700 billion loss since the start of the year, mainly as a result of concerns that Musk was too distracted by running Twitter to focus properly on his car company. Tesla's market capital fell to below $350 billion, having been valued at $1.23 trillion just over a year prior. Putting that into context, that loss was more than the combined value of all other car makers globally. The price drop pushed Tesla out of the top 10 most valuable companies and stripped Musk of the title of world's richest person. Some predicted a death spiral and urged investors to get out while they still could. Other bad news included the news that Tesla's Shanghai factory was forced to reduce production in 2023, with news emerging that the factory essentially had to shut down for the better part of a week due to lower than expected demand. Today, the firm's stock is climbing back up, but Tesla still faces other potential hurdles, including the threat from legacy manufacturers catching up and the loss of those lucrative emissions credits, both of which will give consumers more choice than ever and take significant sums of value off the company. It's important to point out though that many have been predicting the demise of Tesla almost since its inception, but it's still here and it's still making arguably the best electric cars on the market despite the threat of competition from established players. Why else do you think I just bought a Model Y? Tesla, quite frankly, do it better than most. The desirability of the brand and the cars will remain. Tesla made EVs cool, and EVs are only just getting started. Right guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and as ever, don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.